Hey, what's going on guys? For those of you who has been following this channel for quite a bit of time, you probably know that together we've gone through scraping really numerous websites uh, like real estate properties, etc. So, you know, like uh, from the apply programming perspective, we really did uh, a great job already. So we did cover numerous uh, requests plus beautiful soup uh, scrapers and also really lots of uh, scrapey spiders so I have a playlist like for requests plus beautiful soup and scrapey tutorials and you know like uh, eventually uh, uh, I personally came to some sort of a need to explain you know, the very basics uh, regarding web scraping itself so you know like uh, if you're looking uh, uh, web scraping from uh, the job gaining perspective probably those uh, tutorials that are already available on this channel are quite pretty enough to land a job in the industry but uh, if you want to go uh, slightly deeper and try to understand how web scraping works kind of from within uh, well in this case I guess this series uh, is exactly what you need so what exactly it was supposed to what exactly we're supposed to be doing in this kind of series so basically uh, I would like uh, to go through the process of uh, building your own web scraping framework absolutely from scratch and by saying absolutely from scratch I mean not using uh, requests or beautiful soup or scrape or whatever reading libraries but use the bare python uh, libraries which uh, comes with a standard python distribution like in particular, uh, I'm gonna use URLib and also HTML.parser, which is the standard Python HTML parser, but that, that would be the topic of the next video, basically. And uh, I'm not really yet that sure regarding how exactly the end result is supposed to be look like, but uh, in general, web scraping uh, can be divided into two major parts. So first you need to make uh, a request uh, either a get or post request to the corresponding URL endpoint and the second part to consider is actually you need to parse that response to extract the sensitive data uh, and then you just need to store it but that's not really much about web scraping so uh, in this kind of series uh, I'll try to uh, we, we, uh, together we'll try to walk through uh, all, all of this uh, you know like kind of steps so uh, I'm not sure w how uh, how it's supposed to be going uh, further on but at least today uh, in the very first video uh, we're gonna create uh, some sort of a file well so uh, in, in this video we're gonna be handling how to make HTTP get and post requests uh, using the using the bare URL lib and later on, uh, the code that we'll create uh, today in this tutorial would be used in the entire kind of library. Uh, I, I can't really call that framework because that's a little bit too much. And mm, yeah, so mm, this video we, we're gonna be, we're gonna create uh, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna learn how to make uh, HTTP GET and POST requests using the very URL lib. So let me just uh, create a new uh, repository on GitHub and I would like to call this uh, bare minimum scraping library. Uh, uh, maybe web scraping would be better. I just have a bare minimum chess program repository that's, uh, that's where uh, it comes from. So let me think. Okay, I guess this name should be just fine. So here I just provide the description like bare minimum scraping library. And uh, yeah, I want to make it public and also initialize the readme file in here. And maybe here I can say like web scraping library. Uh, okay create repository so yeah now I just need to clone this so to be able to work with this on my local system and I just invoke the terminal on the desktop and by simply saying git clone uh, assuming all uh, that you have the git utility being installed but you can also just uh, uh, download the zip uh, file from there and that's kind of it so 
now we have this PM cell here and also I want to create the source folder uh, like this and here uh, let's create the file called requests .py. okay so uh, just in order to uh, be able to inspect our request uh, I'll be using uh, the part of my scraping kung fu's project uh, which is a site for you guys to learn web scraping so uh, I didn't uh, promote this for for the last month I'm not really gonna be doing this anymore because uh, it's a free service and it runs out of free dinos which is uh, Heroku specific it's it's deployed on, on Heroku it's Heroku dinos are Heroku specific containers uh, to keep your app uh, uh, in a separate space for life on the web so uh, uh, there are too many users already, so the traffic is quite quite pretty big. So if you just have a look here at the dashboard, you'll see what I'm talking about. So it's going to be lots of uh, 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 lots of resp uh, requests here. M maybe it's not really that much, but every time the request occurred, it invokes the instance, and the number of these like invocations is limited. So that's why I don't actually kind of. Uh, promote this anymore but still it has a very mm, nice tool that I've created for my own self just for uh, for the e ease of uh, to make it easy to inspect the incoming requests and here is the I API endpoint that mm, submits the requests and actually prints all the sensitive all, all the sensitive information regarding the incoming requ request so in this case it is, uh, refers to my browser basically but we can also make a request to this uh, API endpoint using the URL lib which is exactly the topic of today's video so without further ado let's actually start uh, writing some code so here I need to specify uh, let's say bare minimum scraping library uh, HTTP requests module this so first uh, uh, I want to provide the name of what is this basically uh, so regarding the entire file and yeah so uh, uh, the next thing, thing to consider uh, we need to import packages and uh, here is be, here is gonna be kind of big list so we need to say from uh, URL lib dot request uh, let me uh, make sure that it, it, it is actually called request yeah URL lib request we need to uh, import uh, the request constructor and also we need to import the URL open method to feed the request we'll create uh, there so URL open uh, also we need to say from URL lib dot parse we need to import uh, URL encode to uh, actually this would this would be used to make uh, post request so your own code uh, is the one to consider and also we'll need to uh, import a couple of error handlers let me just uh, recall my memory so uh, yeah URL lib uh, error URL error and HTTP error so uh, from URL lib dot error we need to import uh, URL, let's start with HTTP error and also URL error. So the first one is considered uh, when the HTTP address, uh, while well, the, well, the destination URL doesn't exist, and this one uh, is used to handle the malformed uh, URLs basically. So um, let me just try to invoke the terminal in the current working directory and just by typing python 3 request requests.py uh, I just want to make sure that every, everything has been imported correctly and that's kind of it so uh, 
now uh, at the moment I would like to uh, implement mm, a couple of methods so uh, in particular this would be the get method and the post method so I can say like def get and uh, well uh, probably we'll need to provide some uh, parameters uh, but first okay so uh, also let's try to kind of you know it's not really that easy to create the open source package uh, in the live mode because you know like I, I didn't yet uh, do this before actually and uh, it needs uh, somewhat a different energy and flow and I don't know like experience compared to creating this apply program in tasks like creating just the web scrapers that just extract some data from the site so I'm sorry guys uh, I, I would be probably I would be changing things along the way so um, we'll see actually how, how it goes so uh, let's just test or uh, get method to make sure it works so uh, the very first thing to consider uh, is actually to formulate the request itself and uh, if we needed just to make the bare request we could have used the URL open uh, immediately uh, saying like uh, like response uh, equals uh, URL open URL open and here provide the URL and dot read and that's kind of it but uh, actually it's not really uh, it's not really the case uh, for us and you know like uh, I just uh, uh, in this case we won't be able to provide uh, the hitters uh, and also we we're not gonna be able to provide uh, if this is the post request the form data so uh, that's the reason uh, we need to create the request object before handling the response so uh, I just create the request variable that would be equal to request and here uh, URL would be equal to so let me just have a look at the documentation of this request itself so this is URL lib error okay don't need this anymore and just this one I guess so I just want to find the request uh, maybe like this would be better idea. Uh, okay, here it is. So uh, this is what I've been talking about. So data stands for user parameters, but in case with a get request, we can just uh, uh, use the URL encode to uh, parse 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 those. Well, uh, actually, literally the same would be. Yeah, so we, we can go for this as well and this headers is actually what we're interested in and this original request host uh, equals to none well I'm not sure regarding this stuff at the moment on verifiable and method so yeah uh, uh, actually here mm, we can explicitly specify the method so just to bear this kind of stuff in mind as well and regarding the parameters we'll need actually the URL uh, the URL and data to, to pass and the headers so uh, okay so let's say uh, here uh, we need to specify the URL followed by the payload and followed by the headers okay Okay, so sorry, I just tried uh, a couple of tests <laughs> regarding py Python specific stuff they, uh, that I slightly forgot. Uh, okay, so the URL would be equal to URL. Uh, uh, in particular, I've been, I've been checking out the um, parameter names being sent within uh, the request itself. So, like URL equals URL and so on. So in that case, you can shuffle the uh, order of providing the arguments uh, of providing this. Uh, yeah, arguments. So uh, now regarding the payload, uh, I'm not sure. Let me just uh, see. So the data uh, uh, we need.
need to use uh, so we can't use this directly like okay so data equals so we can't say like data equals payload because uh, uh, we assume that the payload would be in a, a format of um, Python dictionary and or hold on a sec no we can actually do that but we just need to use okay so um, the first thing uh, so we need to actually try to parse the payload and for this case we need to say like so I just want to get rid of this guys for a while okay and I say payload equals um, URL encode and payload and yeah in this case this is kind of it so and I just want to print the payload and here within the get uh, I would like to provide a Python dictionary type data so key and val like, uh, like this and also followed by the say key one and value one like this so let's run it uh, let's try and see what we got here okay get missing to required positional arguments okay so let's provide something for the euro and let's just provide something for hitters as well okay and save and run okay so perfect now we did uh, obtain our encoded version so uh, actually this this guy i'm not sure uh is, it, is is he really going to append the question mark before this mm, uh okay so the url well i guess if it just say like okay so uh so we did parse the payload and now let's actually generate URL uh, and the URL would be equal actually the URL itself plus question mark plus payload like this and let's also print the URL so here we define the URL itself so let's uh, let's use our base URL from over here uh, unfortunately, well, can we uh, can we use some rams here? Is this gonna work? Yeah, it does. So I'm just wondering. Oh, it's it's within the URL itself. Okay, perfect. So these params are not, are not doing anything. Just just we can inspect them that's it so um, well, let's consider this base URL okay let's consider the entire stuff copy and paste and just get rid of the parameters and now uh, I would like to print the URL itself so um, requests what those keyword argument oh so yeah uh, if I specify this guy so payload would be equal to this stuff and hitters hitters would be equal to this stuff save uh, okay so and here is the uh, here is the URL being generated by actually our get method which is really pretty nice well okay so from now on we can actually try we can already try to um, make an outgoing get request so data in our case would be equal to payload uh, like this yeah I guess this should work 
and eventual response would be euro open and the euro here and dot read and that's kind of it so uh, let's try to print uh, response yeah response we can uh, actually can decode to UDF8 so to convert the bytes to uh, a string type uh, okay now hold my breath and try to run this one more time and finally yeah eventually we did get uh, the nice mm, response so the headers uh, are just probably your lib specific so it's not really uh, something some, something user defined there so data uh, it disregards the payload it does, it's also not available and we uh, we did also pass our key and values over here so perfect so the very last thing left here is actually trying to provide some custom hitters so i guess that sh that should work pretty nicely so um, but before that let me just provide uh, some uh, commentaries here so uh here we create request object and here uh, we actually create the response object okay and again this uh, uh, make HTTP get request okay and also I would like to say like so let's also specif specify our headers that would it be equal to headers like this uh, and just assuming that the here that both the payload and the headers should be uh, a type of Python dictionary so mm, let me just try to uh, make it uh, make a slightly better layout here so I just want to uh, use my user agent from okay from here so actually yeah let me just try to grab the entire heaters from here and where where they can end uh, maybe well maybe just until here right okay copy and paste so what we got here so accept and all this stuff uh, uh, oh my god so many So many stuff to accept. <laughs> okay. Okay, and the host. Just, just want to test all the possible hitters here. And yeah, so yeah, the user agent is probably the last one. Okay, save. Yeah, so now I hold my breath and trying to. make uh, a get request again so 143 okay my god what what's going to run here why doesn't he like this definition is this because mm,
Oh, too many. Yeah, I don't need this guy, right? And yeah. Okay, so what we got now? Uh, theaters accepting coding. So, well, it doesn't seem to work for some reason. So, let's try to check this out. Uh, okay, so we just did print the URL. And let's try to print our theaters, basically. And, okay. So this hitters should be just fine, okay. And I'm not sure. Oh, probably we need to use urllib url encode for hitters as well. So let me just try try trying to make this. Uh, I'm not sure, but this <laughs> I never tried this before to be honest. So string has no items. Okay. Uh, okay, hold on a sec. Well, it's a bit strange. So here in the documentation, it uh, claims the headers to be the dictionary. So it should be a dictionary and will be treated as if add header was called with each key and value as an argument. This is used to spool the user agent. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, Eurolib's default user agent string is Python Eurolib. Okay. An appropriate content type header should be included if the data argument is present. If this header has not been provided in data. What? Oh, content type header should be included if data argument is present. Uh, Okay, but what what's the content type? So, do we have a content type here? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe that's the reason why it doesn't work. So, well, in any case, this should be a type of dictionary, which which we already have. Uh. Okay. Maybe just. Mm, uh, I'll, uh, let me just try to get rid of this uh, of lots of hitters just trying to consider the only one okay don't print hitters but instead let's print what we got in return uh, okay user user agent yeah it's not Okay, so what, what's about what about the content type? Maybe maybe that's the reason it doesn't work. Let me just quickly try to quickly check that. Um, an appropriate content type should be okay. Uh, if this header has not been provided and data is none, okay, the application form your own encoded will be added by default. Okay, maybe just mm, I need to copy this one, and as far as just not just to avoid torturing user uh, with the with the need of adding this, uh, probably I can make this my own self within the get method itself. So let me just try to see how this is supposed to be working. So does this work now? Uh, user agent still still for some reason it doesn't mm. really strange okay and what happens if we just get rid of our data within the request I remember like I did try this and it seemed to be working just perfectly well I'm not sure why it doesn't now Okay, so here's the third one, okay, theaters, okay, 
Oh my god guys, I'm sorry. So <laughs> I was opening the URL but instead of the request object, uh, which is <laughs> weird really. So let me just get back to uh, yeah, what we got here. Um, okay, and instead, obviously instead of URL open URL, we need to use the request object. And I really I hold my breath and I hope this will work now. Okay, so user agent has been changed accordingly. Uh, okay, also I'm wondering if I'm not providing this content type. Uh, is this still gonna work? Well, it seems to be working, so... Yeah, yeah, but that's, that's without the data. So if we just uh, provide the data as well. But do we need actually this data over here I'm not sure uh, so data equals to payload basically we don't really need this because we already did use so uh, but just just for, just for clarity let me try to post must be bytes oh so it considers this to be the post request so okay not no need for our data here and also, as far as this content type will be appended automatically, we don't need that as well. So, now let me just try to uncomment all the set of the hitters and try to run this again. So, yeah, it seems like it did change literally everything, so perfect. So now we have uh, our hitters uh, being available to uh, spoof, basically, being spoofed. Okay. Uh, so, what else to consider? So, obviously, we need to. Uh, I just want to uh, provide. So, I'm just wondering am I supposed to be providing the response? Uh, do we need something else but text? Uh, well, in case if you want to, I don't know, maybe some image scrape you know, or something. So. Uh, probably uh, returning the response object would be the best way, but then we'll need to say like dot read and dot um, encode to UDF eight back. Well, I'm not sure exactly how what's the best way of doing this. Uh, uh, also, we'll need to wrap this into the, tr uh, the tr uh, try accept statement to handle HTTP errors and URL errors as well. Okay, let me think. Okay, guys, I just thought as far as this is done, not like for the real production, so I'm not really... Uh, uh, I don't suppose that somebody would ever uh, will be making money using this very minimum <laughs> scraping library. So uh, let's actually uh, return the bird text uh, instead of uh, the response object. So here we need to say return uh, text content. Uh, return HTML content of the page. So I say like return and response dot read. Uh, okay, we don't need to read this. Oh yeah, I mean like maybe better making it like this. So response dot read dot uh, decode and. UDF8. Okay, also within the request, uh, it's not obviously needed, but uh, I just want to specify that the method would be equal to get. I'm not sure it's the right way of doing things, to be honest, but let me just try this. Uh, okay, it seems like there's no errors there. And, mm, okay, so we got our payload. Uh, Okay. Uh, by the way, can we can we actually get this empty? In this case, zero. Uh, okay. And so uh, let's create the response variable here. So print response. Okay, we got it. So no string word parameters. If if nothing there. Okay, uh, maybe it's not really that flexible that the user would need to uh, provide the empty payload if he doesn't want anything. But still, like, it's 
it's very often we're using the pagination and uh, just to be 100% Pythonic uh, I, I just want to keep keep it like this so explicit is better than implicit as it's been considered in the Python Zen uh, in the Py Python Zen uh, principles of uh, how to code in Python pro programming language so uh, uh, providing the explicit uh, kind of argument even though it's been empty is better rather than just to hide it so just the, the three arguments and that's kind of it so the very last thing to consider uh, here okay so uh, I just want to make sure that the method is equals to get okay perfect by the way if I just change this to post without any data is this gonna gonna be the post uh, instead I'm just really wondering even though the data is not available but method post yeah it works so nice so mm, now I need uh, a couple more things to consider here so uh, let's actually uh, first let's con let's consider the HTTP that doesn't exist basically so this should have uh, give us an error but why doesn't I'm just wondering okay do this store Okay. Mm. I can't understand what's going on basically, so uh okay. Uh, rent URL. Hey, what's what no, no idea what's going on here if it doesn't have to uh, come on th th this <laughs> this is not available You're kidding me man mm, this is not available right yeah but why actually it brings something this is completely strange to be honest okay Euro equals Euro. Mm. Okay, let me just try to get rid of this entirely. Okay. Euro type. Okay, so. Mm, I guess we should have done this over in here, so let's call it try to make HTTP GET request. Just just wanna provide the error handlers, that's kinda it. I have no idea why. Uh, uh, okay. So we need to accept. Uh, so this this is probably URL error. As e rent e so. Oh, it's a value error. Okay, so probably... 
probably, yeah, we don't even need these guys, I guess. Yeah, we can simply, like, bring the error and just say request error like this. Or maybe like even better, like bare minimum scraping library. Mm. Request error. Just to pretty print this stuff. Mm. I'm wondering what's the best, what's the prettiest way of providing this. Or maybe just. Okay, let me just let's, okay. I'll leave this like like this basically. Okay, so now let's try to put some gibberish unknown URL type. Okay, now let's try like HTTP S and. something that doesn't exist should have given error as well service not known okay great and just go back to our copy paste Okay, now it works, and I don't understand why it still works with this, like, gibberish URL. It should have given error as well, so it is literally the same, it seems like. Mm -hmm. Also, well, okay, I guess this, well, this it works, so that doesn't matter really that much, so we're just trying to uh, handle all the possible errors. Uh, okay, so what what else I want to consider in here? Uh, so here we'll, we can actually, so return uh, empty empty content right and just return this like stuff so and again like if okay so some error and probably this empty string okay let me make sure yeah okay Maybe like no content available. Okay. So well, it's almost it's almost pretty it, I guess. So we just try to get rid of this unnecessary uh, hitters as well and. Scraping Kanfu and like this. Okay. So not to get URL all the stuff and let me just okay. Say play around with uh, parameters, so say page equals to one. So we got it here. It's not the data in the, within the data because it's to get requests instead of post requests. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm, this is kind of it, I guess. Okay, guys. So mm, let me just also create a new file called test. Uh, 
Bethesda Pie, and I'm not a fan of unit tests, and so I'll just make it like a good old way, basically. Uh, uh, okay, so let me just try to get rid of all of this stuff and save and test. So I say import. Oh my god, but if I say import requests, uh, is this gonna import the requests? <laughs> not the <laughs> request library so maybe I should have called this slightly different mm. okay let me just call this request instead of requests just to make sure no conflicts with the already existing library name so import request and just trying to print uh, a request dot get and let's say HTTP as google.com and basically provide the empty data and yeah and also the empty hitters so let me just check this as well so python3 uh, test.py okay and I got the response from google's start starting page well guys mm, I guess this is it for this tutorial so I hope you've Learn something interesting out of it, uh, out of it and got uh, a slightly better understanding of what's going on under the hood when we're making an outgoing HTTP request. And in the next part uh, of this series uh, on how to create a web scraping framework from scratch, uh, we're going to cover the HTML parser, which is standard Python uh, parsing library to actually deal with the content that we have retrieved using uh, this request.py file that we've just created here and the get method in particular uh, okay oh my god <laughs> oh my god guys I'm sorry uh, I forgot uh, I forgot one little stuff here so yeah we also need to implement the post request because sometimes it's really needed so let me quickly do this that as well so make post request and this all would be literally the same but we don't want so we don't need to generate URL here instead uh, instead we using data data equals and payload right and Hitters and method would be post, uh, and also we need to encode our maybe okay, we can do it here or okay, payload dot encode like this and. okay and call this post yeah I'm sorry so really should have uh, test this as well so let's try to make now a post request and again like scraping Ooh, okay let me just grab this quickly Copy. and paste Okay, maybe let's just 
take away some. So here we get our post data, which is nice. And the hitters, uh, I'm, I want to see my custom one. Uh, user agent. Yeah, this is it. Custom test. Perfect. So method equals to post. And yeah, the URL is available as well. So, well, this is it, guys. Uh, I hope. Now I hope you've learned something interesting and exciting out of this tutorial. So next time, definitely, definitely we'll go for HTML parser. So until next video, and take care.